hey, welcome in to look who's back. Oh yeah, baby, we back, we back, we back, back in a big way. Welcome into the PHNX Rising Podcast. Phoenix is uh, well, they're something. They're uh, they're middling, <laughs> middling. So aren't we? Uh, yeah, it's. Oh man, I am Max Simpson. I am back, and I'm joined by Mister Owen Evans. How we doing, buddy? It's a uh, Monday. They're different. Oh gosh, yeah, it's a, a it's a, it's a Monday. Yeah, you know, I thought we were gonna get a quite mundane Monday uh, pod, you know, with the the whole, uh, you know, just as a programming note because uh, the match is on Friday this week. You know, of course, we are here on a Monday. Going to be back with you on our Wednesday. We are issuing the normal Tuesday Thursday uh, to make room for to, uh, this week's match, but. Yes, uh, you know, we were going to expect just a normal, oh, we kind of recap New Mexico pod, uh, kind of horsing around. And, uh, you know, uh, we got some bigger, uh, some developments, uh, quite landed yeah. eventually. But we'll get into all of that later. We got a lot going on uh, in tonight's show. Appreciate y'all joining us, Siley. I see you in the chat. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, man, it's going to be a good one, but we got to start with one that's. Well, it's not really a good one. We don't want to start with it, Max. We don't want to start with it. How about that match, man? How about that? Did you watch it? Did you watch it in the end? Did you watch? I did. I mean, I ended ended up. I ended up going back to it, and uh, let me uh, let me say uh, that was an error. It was. It was. I've seen matches before. Um, That was something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, percent was... possession, six shots, one on target is not a recipe for success. Listen, where I, all I'm saying is I saw uh, Phoenix Rising and naming, uh, you know, like, oh, who's going to be uh, the the player of the month so far for March? And I'm thinking, well, I you think, go with the goalkeeper or the one goal scorer? Yeah, I was going to say I'm, I'm pretty sure Rocco Rios Novo, you know, awesome, like one of the team's better players as he was last year. That's not a bad place to be. It's kind of different connotation and context this time around. So, uh, you know, Owen, you were there. Uh, what did uh, what did it feel like? What did you make of this match? I mean, kind of setting the scene. It's New Mexico. Never any love lost there. Thinking, hey, rising, coming off of a uh, you know a win. It's like let's go. Like we got a little bit of momentum. And uh, well, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. It was pretty miserable, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I think it, it just summed up a lot of the issues that we've we've seen with this team and been asking about this team. Yeah. From day one of this season, um, it, it was just the epitome of all of that. It felt as though all the progress that had been made in the game against Birmingham Legion, when you compare that to the Monterey Bay game the week before that, had just kind of been thrown away. Um, this team couldn't work the ball into dangerous areas, couldn't find ways to get dangerous shots off. I, I remember seeing one New Mexico uh I was going to say fan, but of course we know that they have, uh, at least in the past, had employment with said club. Um, Referencing the fact that uh, Tambakis is the GOAT. And you look at that and think, what did they make him do? Um, One shot on target and it came in the first 10 minutes and that was from distance. Yeah, That was a fraction of point. I believe it was 0.025 XG. It was a shot from distance that just conveniently vaguely hit the target well it's, it's i it's, mean it's no disrespect to what erickson gallardo who i believe shot that but it's like if yeah li- li- listen people people can have their moments in their bag and uh you know we've seen players hit those types of shots you know players on this team uh it, like to your point if that's the only if that's the only out attacking output that's threatening all game and again no disrespect to gallardo that's not really what we've seen from his bag that's just not really a recipe to uh, pick up anything no. constructive. Yeah. No, no, it's not. I tell you what, should we should we have a quick listen actually to because we didn't play this on the post game show? Should we have a quick listen to what rising head coach Danny Stone said after that last game? His, his initial thoughts. Sure. Disappointed with the game. I think it's um, it was a game that we uh, we didn't get to grips with the the type of game it was with the conditions well enough and. Um, you know, we've, I think overall, my biggest uh, my biggest feeling now is is um, I didn't feel like we found ourselves in the game enough um, in possession. Particularly, we we didn't play well enough in in possession, and uh, you know we com- we competed, we pushed second half, and uh, tried to drive the game in the second half. But um, 
the the level of effectiveness with the ball. We didn't produce enough to um, you know to, to create opportunities and, and clear opportunities and. You know, we pushed and there was effort, and we were trying to drive the game. But the the quality and what we did with the ball was uh, was not good enough today. Yeah, I mean, well, well said. Um, uh, you know, man, it's it's one of those where we've we kind of estimated going into the season that given and, and like we're not trying to sound like a broken record for you know the, for for people who are watching this and who've been watching us, you know, not only throughout the off season going into this season. You lost a ton of attacking talent. You realize that goals are going to be hard to come by. The one thing that you can hang your hat on is you're going to play solid defense. Even if it's going to be ugly wins, ugly results, you're maybe not going to get as many of your high scoring affairs like you did last season. These might be one nil, two one victories, some draws, whatever. You you understand that knowing that you've lost a lot of talent. I think the frustrating part about this game is to Danny Stone, you know, to what he's saying. Yes, we've seen this um, much like most of Rising's other matches so far this season is there's not that attack attacking output. I think the thing that is a little bit more concerning is we understand there's been a makeshift back line. This has now been a game where they've been playing together. That, the, that back three has been kind of gelling together. They've kind of had that uh, camaraderie amongst them. And it just seemed like you know, from what you kind of watch in this match, just a lot of flat footedness, just a lot of people like almost kind of like that. Oh, Hey, that's your guy. He's in your, he's in your space. I'll pass him off to you. And just almost a lack of, I'm not going to say effort because these are professional players. They definitely are, are motivated. We're not going to say that, but it's very much a, Hey, w- take responsibility for a man or pass them off to the right person. And it seemed like there was just a bit of that, I guess for lack of a better term, complacency there. I think, again, right, and this is kind of what we've been hinting at, I think, for the entirety of this season. So when I point out these three areas, it's not going to come as much of a surprise. Um, Number one is that you have a midfield that I think is quite slow, quite one-dimensional. Not necessarily as a critique of the individual players in that midfield, but the way that they are paired up. Um, lends itself in that way. They are quite similar players in that sense. They aren't going to be players who are going to consistently pick out runs going forward. They're going to slow the game down. They're going to pass it sideways. They're going to pass it backwards. It tends to help you stall out a little bit in that midfield because there isn't the person there who's going to drive you forward. I think that this team is weaker on its left-hand side than on its right. And that's not necessarily a comment on the fullbacks even. But when you look on the right-hand side and you have Panos Armanakis and Edgardo Rito, you see that as a pairing whereby you're kind of looking at both of them as realistically 90-minute kind of players. When you look on the opposite-hand side and you're thinking about, okay, maybe you've got Azakar, maybe you've got Gabi Torres out there. But then you're looking at someone like Narikson Gallardo, who we know is probably more of an impact sub and someone who's going to be very impactful in those moments when you bring him on against tired legs or you have someone like Federico Varela out there. And then you have the number nine position. And in a lot of ways, I think what we're seeing from that is... Darius Formel is not playing in what you'd expect always to be the typical number nine. He's not making quite as many of those runs that you'd expect from someone who's playing as an out-and-out nine. He looks as though, and I mean, he said this before. This isn't a surprise to anybody. He said before that he views himself as more of a winger or a number 10 that is a true number nine. You have Remy Cabral waiting in on the bench most of these games. I mean, how do you balance that out? I A lot of people are just pointing at we need a striker, we need a striker, we need a striker. And you're not wrong that there could be a good case for finding more depth in that number nine position. But there's a lot more to it than just that. I feel as though, realistically, what you're looking at is a combination of all three of those things. And maybe if you fix two of them, it works out. But when all three of them are causing you issues, as they seemingly are at the moment, that's when you're going to have problems. And that's something that, We've kind of known since the start of the season, right? And and yeah. that's why I, I'm I'm quite happy that Danny Stone isn't taking or doesn't appear to be taking the brunt of the blame at the moment for this. Um, because I don't personally think that it's fair to pin that all on a coach who broadly inherited this squad. If these are questions that we've had since day one, 
Um, th these are deeper issues. I, I feel as though, again, we've heard in recent weeks Danny kind of defending the players that he has here, and I understand that. And I understand why a coach in that position is going to do that and why they're going to say those things publicly and don't disagree with that. But I still feel as though there's they still work that needs to be done to this team to, to really get them to a position whereby they're going to consistently find ways of, of producing chances in the attack. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think the thing is we, you know, as we're kind of, we're seeing the off season play out and everything like that, you know, you like a lot of the pieces added. And I think as we kept on seeing players signed, all the players that we saw coming in, you're thinking, oh, that's a quality addition. It's going to definitely help with, uh, you know, it's a long season. Uh, it's going to definitely help with um, rotating guys in and out. Not everyone's going to play 90 minutes every single match throughout the season. Uh, being able to work with some new pieces, especially across the back line, within the midfield as well. And I think the thing we kept on thinking is, oh, this is great. The depth has really improved with this team. And I believe that to still be true. I think the issue is, and that we keep on going about it is, okay, well, if you then are are kind of missing a couple guys up top, and again, not every team has to replace, how many times do we say this, two of the top five golden uh, boot contenders within the league, as well as a very quality box-to-box -box midfielder amongst other pieces, you know, those aren't easy things just to straight up just replace straight out. And again, it's not, it's no slight to the guys who are on the roster. I like the quality that we have. It's just, that is a tremendous loss of, it's not just going to be filled by one or two players, but when you don't necessarily, and it's not just the striker position, but when you don't address the striker position, when you don't address some of those guys up top and you just say, Hey, we'll kind of piecemeal it in with different place, players who were good for us last season, but we're, are now playing slightly out of position or they can do a job, but it's not to their full capabilities. It leaves you in the situation of, I mean, this is where you're at. You're kind of playing a, Hey, let's work up into chemistry. Not only where you're having to fit players together, who haven't play, always played together, but also guys who are now playing in positions where sure they can do it, but it's not to their full effectiveness. And it just, you're kind of seeing the result over these, you know, past matches. Right. And, and this is where I think, well, when you're talking about replacing Trejo and Arteaga, you have to understand that I think in an ideal world, what you'd be doing, and this is probably as best as you're going to get it on the current st squad that you've got, you're talking about Darius Formella being Danny Trejo, and you're talking about Remy Cabral being Manuel Arteaga. And that's also not what we've actually seen so far this yep. season. Um, the idea that Federico Varela or Erickson Gallardo is going to play the second coming of Danny Trejo is not is not the case. No. That's that's we're not going to see that out of them. No. If we were going to see anything out of them, I think we'd have seen something more of that ilk already, given that they have been here already for a year. Um, we haven't seen that on a consistent basis from them. So to expect that they would step up and be the Danny Trejo replacement there, to me, feels a little bit naive. Um, again, this is, it's an issue that, again, I know these things will get thrown in and tossed back towards, towards Danny football managers always bear the brunt of these things, but I just don't personally believe that it's, it's that simple, but at the same time, you're in a position whereby if rising, don't get a result on a, usually a difficult playing surface in Tulsa this weekend, you could be in a position oh, whereby this gosh. team could be five games into the season and only have three points to their name, or they can have four points to their name. But regardless of that, only having one win in five games is a, a terrible start to the season. I will actually pick up on one thing from the chat here. Um, and that is both Brett and, uh, yeah, there's comments in here about Julio and, and how he's performing and, and how he looked in his debut there. Um, I, I agree that I think we saw flashes from him, especially early doors. We saw him trying to play some balls forward, trying to get something going out of the midfield. He's still young. I think we need to bear that in mind. He he is young. Um, but yeah, I'm I saw something, I think, in those first five or so minutes he was out there. If he can try and expect you know, stretch that out make that a longer kind of contribution in that sense. We'll see. But again, 
it's hard to do a lot coming off the bench. It can be. It can be hard doing a lot coming off the bench when not many other people are doing a whole lot of anything. It, it, so it is. I think the thing you keep on kind of we've seen over these, you know, really even in the past two, three matches is there are you know, there are guys in this team we know that can be individual playmakers that have the talent. And I think there are guy individual players can change moments, can make those, you know, high impact opportunities. I think the issue is is whether you're starting or whether you're coming off the bench, this team just has some structural things that they need to change. And as much as you want, you know, one or two of those guys who it's like, take it on and go create that magic. It, it, listen, it might get you the opportunities here and there, but that's, I don't think that's something that's sustainable. And this team needs to fundamentally just, you know, it, it, it's things like it's making additional runs. It's moving off the ball. It's tra it's things like we saw, you know, in New Mexico's goal and really a lot of their chances they have of, you know, turning the shoulder, checking the man, like things that, you know, th things that you, you know, it's kind of just that chemistry and going with the team, but it's not one player is looking to make the difference. You love that to happen. This team has guys who can do that. Um, but I think it's just a, it's a slippery slope. If that's what we're looking to bail this team out week after week, this team just needs to play more cohesively, you know, in those matches. They do. They do. I tell you what, I don't want to dwell on this game for much longer. I don't. So I'm going to. I'm going to add this, this one little bit extra here, and I'll say that, that players left out of the match day squad making the, the choice to retweet things about their stats from several months ago. Um, should we be concerned about this? Um, it's not the most positive sign, is it? No, it's um, I, I understand that you're, a, you're the defending champion um, starting off the season very poorly, so of course spirits are going to be yeah, very variable, but that's not a good sign. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, how you apportion things, I don't know. We're not in the locker room. I'm not going to get into that. And who's doing good things well? Who's doing thing making bad decisions? I'm I'm not going to get into that one because I I don't know. But it's not from the outside looking in. It's not a good look. Sure. If I it, I would like to ask you as well as the chat where are you on the eh, call it you know maybe a bit of recent bias let's call it the optimism meter one being doom and gloom we optimism. are optimism 10 being hey there's a chance we could turn this whole thing around give me a number between one and ten please where you're at i'm just thinking back as you say that to in 2021 when rick called me in preseason, mr doom and gloom Ish. um <laughs> You're not asking the right person here. For no, this I'm one. not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm what I'm concerned, and I'm concerned because I don't think that any of these teams that Rising have played have been particularly good teams. Yeah, and they've struggled to create a whole lot against them. They're going to what's typically a, a difficult playing surface against a team that, again, they're not great, but they're also. I mean, again, none, none of the teams they played so far have been great. Look, Rising had scored. A good number more goals by this point last season against arguably more difficult opposition, including more road games. Um, I mean, they've they, what remember that first three games last season, Charleston, San Diego, San Diego. That was a difficult start to the season. Yep. Okay. And then they follow it up with Birmingham Legion. And again, right, things start to turn around at that point but they, they were finding ways to i think create more chances at that point it, this is just i'm concerned because again these things they get into a rut if there's discontent which already i mean again we're speculating but it's not a good sign what we're seeing publicly already about how things are going mm -hmm. then you sometimes get into that spiral and it's early there are still things to be optimistic about, and Brett is correct there in that, look, the the defense, again, should get better. Yep. But the problem is, is that you need to get that attack sorted, and the longer it takes to get that going, the more concerning it is. Again, I, I feel as though this is something they're going to have to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit and think about how they're going to change things to make this work. And it's not as simple as just picking different players on a given match day or slightly tweaking the tactics. I think we've seen four games and yeah, they've been, some have been better than others, but 
broadly speaking, one goal in four games. Yeah. You are where you deserve to be in the table at that point. Yeah, yeah, I see. So Brett's giving it a five. Ben Dudas Bluber giving it a four uh, until recruitment picks up. Um, you know, I, I think that's just kind of that's kind of it. Is um, kind of going off Brett's comment is there are some things to be optimistic in the sense of you know yes Rocco back to his usual self defense in where they're at very solid and yes only going to get better mid field is we know the players there it's kind of hit or miss some of the performances are very on par what we expect other times there's been you know a bit below their performance i think the thing that is very different in last season is rising has gone through stretches where they weren't scoring goals but i think we've often said in last season it's Oh, they need to be, how many times did we say last season? They need to be more clinical. They need to put away their chances. We haven't even been able to get to that point yet. That's to me. No, the, because again, again, right. And I'll, sorry, I'll pull some stats from this last game. I was yeah. going to pull these and I forgot to reference it, it, but 51 final third entries for Phoenix rising to 52 final third entries for New Mexico, but rising converted that into only eight touches in opposition box versus New Mexico's 21. Yeah. Okay. So you're getting into the final third at a pretty much dead on the yeah. same amount oh, as yeah. the opposition, but you are getting it into you know, the, the opposition are getting it into your penalty area somewhere between two and three times as often. That's just it. We, we listen, we've had, you know, players last season, um, again, mi missing opportunities and everything like that. You just kind of think the law of averages are going to eventually even out. You're going to put those away when you're getting into the final third. Fine, all well and good. When you're not getting into the opponent's, uh, you know, uh, opposition box, K, not really much you can do with that. And then you're not really adjusting for even the shots, even shots on target to compensate. It's going to be a long day. Uh, if you are in for a long day, I might recommend my friends at Circle K. Circle K can help you out during a very long day, especially if you have a road trip ahead of you, uh, especially if you're dehydrated from a day of hiking whatever crazy stuff you have. Shout out as well, by the way, sorry, the rising season ticket members. Remember you, you've, you've got a discount card, haven't you guys? And where's that for? Mm, circle K mm. circle K join their inner circle program today. Again, it's the free membership program. Save 25 cents off per gallon for your first five Phillips. You got all the different clubs that they got going on pizza, the coffee, the ice cold fountain drinks, all of that stuff. You get free stuff just by joining the inner circle program. All you need is a phone number. Just download today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for more details. And Circle K is a great spot where you can get our friends at Arizona Lottery. They currently have their AZ Adventure Program. Oh my goodness. It is beautiful out there. Pretty darn easy. You just have to hike Arizona. And I'm not talking about the whole darn state. That's a pretty big state. It's like the sixth largest state, I believe, uh, in the nation. Uh, but you know, you can hike one of 10 places like Picacho Peak, Monument Valley, or Camelback Mountain. Have ticket prizes up to $50,000. But you know, maybe you're not the hiker. That is okay. You can check in at Geolocated Adventures and even just by, you know, kind of stopping, going to the parking lot, checking in, boom. That will get it done going to azadventure.com. Of course, you can redeem tickets online for a chance to win $1 million. Seven figures right there in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. You know, when Pittsburgh roll into town, we may have to... Uh... We may have to team up with a certain former rising goalkeeper that's really, really beloved because I know that he really loved to hike, didn't he? Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, I don't even know how to uh, get out of uh, <laughs> get out of that one. But uh, you know, uh, you're trying to cause uh, cause some cause some trouble and uh, cause a little bit of news. We uh, we heard a little bit of news uh, today, Mr. Owen Evans. Did we? Yeah. A bit of, oh yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah, um, yeah. So <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this one is really reported by the uh, Sports Business Journal, and they're they're talking about some legislation at the moment that's going through the state legislature, um, and kind of provides the background to all of this um, that would affect zoning and the creation of special districts, um, theme park districts in particular, 
um, and how they're created and different restrictions on them. Yeah. And the main reason for creating those those particular special tax districts is that it allows some kickback from sales tax on site towards uh, costs, uh, to construction costs. Um, this is something that was obviously being linked with the coyotes. The coyotes, of course, denying at the moment any real involvement in this particular legislative effort. But someone who did have involvement or testified in front of the uh, committee uh, in the state Senate was uh, the current chief executive of Hartford Athletic. Mm. And uh, the reason why is because he's currently involved in a consortium that are considering a mixed-use development in Mesa that could involve a professional football ground. Now, that's kind of the the big picture on this one. Um, he was quoted, of course, and said to the Sports Business Journal that it's perfect timing for one or both of those leagues, that is Major League Soccer or the National Women's Soccer League at WSL, to land here. And the argument there is, is that what they're looking to do is bring in effectively an MLS team or an NWSL team after building a, a stadium there. Um, there's also, uh, there was some talk in there about involving Phoenix Rising as well, possibly. Um, we'll get onto that a little bit later, but just go on. Uh, Max, what were your first thoughts when you, when you saw this news? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think whenever you see these big announcements, it's not to completely dissuade or throw it off. But I think these are these things, the way they drum them up, they're meant to be attention grabbing. They're meant to, you know, cause a fracas, whether, you know, positive for some people, negative for some, neutral for others. I, I think that we're way too early on in the process to like jump to conclusions or to get too far ahead of things or whatnot. I mean, I, I don't know. Is it all smoke and mirrors? I'm not necessarily saying in that, but is it also, you know, oh, is this going to be happening? We're not there yet either. I, no, no. It's just, you're too early on in the process to really form a concrete opinion about this. I mean, if, if, if I'm going to venture an opinion, okay, sure. It's interesting. It, it definitely brings up the plausibility for something like this to happen, but we've seen developments kind of go throughout the state, both ones that Phoenix Risings have been involved in, in stadiums they've played in, and then also ones that they have been built. They've kind of touted, uh, you know, soccer facilities, and it just hasn't really been used for that. I, I don't know. I don't really put more stock into this until I need to. Right. And I understand that. I, I also point out that even if the legislation is to pass, of course, that does not mean that this is going to happen. Exactly. It does not mean that even, you know, even if this development is built, it does not mean that Major League Soccer or the NWSL are coming in and actually going to put anything there. Um, I will say here, by the way, chat, if you've got any questions, throw questions in the chat and we will we will answer what we can. Sure. Um, as we continue to discuss this. Um, I understand that there are people obviously unsure about what this means and, and some of the other things um, we've seen that going around on social media and obviously can't answer all of your questions on there all of the time. We'll do our, our best here. Uh, Brett, you are correct. It hasn't been scheduled for a full vote in the Senate yet. Um, and it's also worth noting that this uh, was effectively, a, I believe it's a striking amendment. It effectively just completely struck all the existing text from the bill that was passed by the House um so it's a completely new bill um yeah yeah that's sure. pretty much how things go but um again th throwing questions you've got them as we keep talking on this one but let's have a look right now we can show you the the development site at the moment the one yep. that's being reported by the sports business journal it'll be this spot here south of the 202 and it'll be east of where it meets the 101 so it's right around by mesa riverview not too far away, of course, from where Phoenix Rising played its games at what was then Casino Arizona Field. But that's the current location that's that's being thrown around as this potential development site for uh, this mixed use development should it go ahead. Um, we did actually get uh, some, some comment here from Phoenix Rising and coming from Phoenix Rising Club President Bobby Dooley. We'll read through. Uh, the full statement now that we received via email today. Phoenix Rising FC has not had any conversations with uh, 
I'm I'm going to stumble over his name. I'm sorry there. Um, <laughs> Sakayevich. The city of Phoenix has been a great partner to us. One year ago, we opened our doors in Phoenix for the first time and drew a franchise record 10,437 fans. The central location and our proximity to the Valley Metro Light Rail gives Rising the best chance to continue to grow its fan base at this time. That's Phoenix Rising Club President Bobby Dooley in a statement sent to PHNX Rising today um when we were asking for reaction to the the news um max i'm gonna let you go ahead and any more thoughts you've got at the moment as, as people keep going on no for sure and, and i think i mean the one big thing is right and we pulled it up on screen is you know d goalies comment slash people are going to hit with the question i'm not a huge mls fan but i want rising to be a part of any stadium deal better mls than follow san diego Loyal's fate. I think that's going to be the question that's going to come most from people is are Phoenix rising about to be San Diego loyal? Like that, that that's something that, you know, whether you have been following this team for years or you are a casual and you hear this news, that might be a very, you know, obvious question to ask. And that's totally fair. I mean, it's one of those things, again, there's like, we're so early on in the process that, you know, no two situations are alike. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, again, you you're, you're hearing from uh, what we heard, you know, what uh, was sent by Phoenix Rising President Bobby Dooley of saying, "Haven't had any conversations, you know, we're enjoying where we're playing at." That's all you can take it at is face value. Until there's more information, that's really all you can yep. lead it as. Pretty much, it's yep. It is an awful one. I will add this, and I know this was another question that people had because, of course, it was mentioned that maybe Phoenix Rising come on board as a partner or a tenant, and obviously that was being downplayed uh, in the uh, statement there by by rising club president bobby dooley but when you get into it and i know people were asking about what the long-term future at the the current site is yeah. it's worth noting the team is in a five-year lease at the moment with the city of phoenix that we're currently in year two of that lease it can be extended then there are five one-year optional extensions on the end of that subject to the approval of the city of phoenix's director of aviation services um as you move beyond that i i, I mean the the real limiting factor here is that yes the airport does have plans for that site they are not necessarily in the immediate future in 2019 that site was earmarked it's going to be where they add some some new uh, facilities because they're trying to move things around with cargo free up more space that's currently being delayed um at the moment it, it's being delayed because of stalled negotiations over the uh rail line currently between the airport and the current site um and so in an an april 2022 update to the uh master plan for sky harbor uh the management plan for sky harbor they said that because of that um realistically you're looking at it, it, the entire cargo movement may not be done within and this is the only time frame they gave in that one within eight years um because of delays to it it's not viewed as a near term uh goal for the airports now i mean the, again the original plan the original comprehensive asset management plan was was 20 years planning um and that was set out in 2019 so yeah it's 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 yeah. Uh, to bandy this a little bit, I don't have the immediate answer up for you on that one. There is a uh, yeah. There there is an upward mobility fee, of course. It's it's a percentage of the the expansion fee. Um, so for Rising to go up, yes, they would have to pay out USL. Uh, presuming that there was no um prior agreement otherwise. Um. In the absence of any knowledge of that, we will assume that the usual rules apply and they will have to pay. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Kind of see how uh, that land development kind of looks. I mean, right, seeing people of what that kind of looks like from the long-term solution of where they're playing. You know, Rising will at some point kind of have to face where, you know, where they're going to be playing for the long-term foreseeable future. All I'll say is this, we kind of saw how quickly in retrospect and I would say quickly in terms of the legalese and, you know, uh, kind of how things work through the government spectrum is they were able to get a pop, a pop-up ground relatively quickly with everything. So, um, yeah, 
yeah so I it's it, what, it, I, what i what i'd add on that and just sorry on on how quickly sure. they managed to do it of course is that the club owns the the actual physical stands and all of that okay so right if and when the time comes to move again um presuming there's no greater plan to this yep. um it's simply a matter of finding land and and um, that and that and that's just it this makes it a much more pliable solution of yeah rising at some point will either it's some point down the road finding either a different pop up ground or you know, working with someone to build something more permanent, so to speak, whatever that is. I mean, yes, I get they need to be proactive. No one's saying they're not, but it's also, you know, I don't think it's quite as a time crunch as people may seem. Just because we hear news of a development does not mean that Rising's time is now ticking away. So more to come. We'll keep you guys posted on anything else. Oh, and anything else you have on this uh, story, quote unquote, uh, while we got you. Uh, on this story, I, I feel as though we're kind of hitting the, I think we've hit most of the main points here again, unless people have specific questions. Um, I'm not sure there's a whole lot that we can add at this time. Again, as Max is saying, and you're completely right, Max, um, it's early. There's no real concrete plans that have been put out into the public domain about what exactly this looks like. Yep. Um, and how exactly, I mean, right now we have the, yeah, we'll build a stadium and we'll speak to MLS about it. Well, yep. Phoenix Rising has been trying to speak to MLS for years and years and years. You can't always assume that things are going to just easily go go through and that's it. Of course, there's a real risk of it. It's one that we're all aware of. It's one that I think um, we've spoken about quite a few times. I mean, San Diego really drove that point home. Yep. Um, the fact that yeah, well, the nature of how MLS works in these these areas, they sometimes just drop a team in and there you go. There you have it. It's there now. Um, and a USL team can struggle to compete against that. But I wouldn't be overly concerned for now, at yep. least. Wait until more details come through. Yeah, We'll see more in the future. I will say, if you want a bit of stadium news, I'll give you this one. Um, do you know this is still uh, some of the process for New Mexico Stadium had to be kicked back because of... Uh, clerical errors oh yeah so you know how we thought everything had been approved yeah yeah no oh no <laughs> they got another hearing coming up now on april 11th i know that much um yeah yeah so i yeah that's uh they're having a fun time over there i mean there is organized opposition to new mexico's current stadium plan stadium plans i'm not saying this is the clerical error to be fair i don't know how to spell albuquerque and i don't really know if i want to learn so yeah there you go uh Just City in general, just yeah. avoid the city in general. Just, just avoid the city in general. You know, I'm not going to be avoiding is our friends at OG's Brands. They're not going to give you a clerical error, right? They have great, nicely printed labels that tell you exactly what you're getting, and you get to experience it for yourself. Join in on the sum. It is gummy madness season. Follow along. We got eight competing dispensaries putting gummy versus gummy against each other each week in a bracket to determine a champion. It is. March Madness. Well, oh my gosh, it's March Madness, but we're now in April. We're coming down to the wire. That's kind of crazy how calendars work. Vote for your favorite gummy as the winner. We'll receive a BOGO offer. Follow along to see who wins, guys. I got all the different products representing all these different dispensaries, right? The big OGs, the OGs Naturals, Pegs, RSO, the Minis, the Sleep Edition, all that stuff. You guys already know you love OGs. To learn more about them, and see where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. Follow them on socials at ogsbrands. You must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. Also, check out our friends at Valley Tap Room. You can enjoy them responsibly if you're 21 years or older. they got the two locations at Gilbert and Queen Creek. They always have great stuff. Banging from the music to the food trucks. we got trivia. Uh, you know, we've played a little bit of not bingo we have played trivia before uh, we definitely won it big and you can win big they got four peaks on tap as you know they got wine they got the wine slushies everything like that it is a fun time out there at valley tap room go check them out follow them on socials at valley tap room and of course again visit them in person the one in gilbert or the one in queen creek yeah okay we're gonna have to do trivia at some point again max soon oh, it was fun it was fun. We yeah. actually, it's a, it's one of those, what a, uh, it's one of those ones where it's like, you know, different theme. They have sometimes it's different theme nights of all that stuff. But even if you just want regular trivia, you know, they got it there. Uh, it's a nice little intimate spot. So maybe, you know, sometimes less competition, less people you got to fight for for the trophy, but I'll take it. Yeah. It's fine. It's good times. Good times. Max, you got some news for us, mate. 
Oh, yeah. His, uh, I hear there's a little bit of a, a transaction, so to speak, that occurred. I mean, some people, well, I don't know. I guess it, I thought it might have gotten leaked, but uh, I, I hear some people might know about it. But I think you should, you know, kind of share with some people. I've been definitely, definitely working on a little something, and I, I think it's it's ready to share now. Okay, okay. So, Max, can we reveal what has happened? <sighs> All right, let's do it. We got a graphic. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. I've been. I've been signed by Phoenix Rising. That's crazy. Okay, yeah, guys. That's why I've been away from the pod uh, for a bit, doing a little trial run, uh, you know, playing my position as striker, that number nine position, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, last club, you know, probably on the PHNX Rising pod. I, I mean, I bring golden boot experience to this club. Uh, again, also a champion mentality. You see there on the right-hand side, a little small goal soccer champion. So, you know, I got the stats I got the trophies and, you know, I will bring my explosive Sunday league goal scoring abilities and championship mentality to this club. What more can you want? This team has scored one goal in four matches. And if I'm doing my math right and my experience, well, I don't know if we can go down from there. There we go. We do have some stats from our good friend, John Morrissey, who said oh. that Simpson was without exaggeration, the best striker in the third tier of his Sunday league by my data. He controls his team's goal scoring output in every way, putting in solid attacking contributions while also providing ad transitions and buying beers. Numbers are here. Look at the, look at that. The X ads, that's up way high there. 92% uh, weighted, of course, uh, position relative, but the beers you're lacking a bit, mate, only 44%. That's fair. You know, um, I, I, you know, people, people always like to go for volume of, uh, of, of, of beers and that's fair. I'm more of a, you know, uh, when the moment comes, I'm there to chug a beer. I mean, again, the golden boots speak for themselves. 97 percentile. I mean, it's, that's pretty darn high uh, for those math. What about uh, the, the PTO used at 94 uh, percent? That's, that's maybe a little bit skewed, uh, but Hey, it is a, it is a positive stat. None shoulder less. condition, shoulder uh, condition. Shoulder at condition I, I think that actually is unfortunately accurate. It's uh it's uh, you know, that is the one thing hampering a uh, good thing that this sport is played with feet and not with shoulders as much. So we like that there. Uh, the what about if someone came into shoulder charge, you mate, would you, would it hold up or it actually has held up before. So okay. we're, we're, we're not bad there. Yeah, we're yeah. not, we're not, we're not bad there. Uh, Jake Anderson's tried to check me and well, I've checked him back. So, uh, oh. yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a couple others on here, the parlay com uh, completion. Yeah, that's a, it's a bit harsh, uh, but you know, uh, we, we like to say we, we usually more. get about 72% of the way through and then it fails, you know? So that's, uh, is it, is it 70, either that, or it's saying I complete 72% of my parlays. I the 28 think it's, I think it's that you get about 72% of the way through and then fail. Oh, uh, I mean, that's, Actually, that is actually quite accurate. Three out of four. That's about, you know, 75, 72 percent. That's fair. That works. Uh, you know, the puns, honestly, I was kind of looking for that to be a little bit higher. Um, you know, uh, 75 percent. I was expecting kind of more of the 90, 95. But uh, hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. We can get. And uh, yeah, only a 28 percent on tattoo timeliness. Well, so. I like to I like to, you know, as uh, to quote uh, a rising opponent, you know, better late than never. It did happen. It ended up happening and uh, we're all better for it. So there we go. OK, OK. Okay. Okay. Now, Max, what's the real news? Oh, that wasn't real. No. Uh, hang I, on I, a minute. Wait. Hang on. Hang on. No, sorry. Let's let's take the chat actually first. Then we'll take the the real news here. As uh, oh boy, did oh, you make uh, the team by playing at the open tryouts, Max? Can I make the team by playing? Uh, no. You know, I'm actually saving my talent for next year. Uh, get a, get a little bit more uh, seasoned uh, under my belt. Um, I think we'll stay with Remy. That's understandable. Well, that's that's yeah. fair. He probably probably, probably does it. Probably does a job. Uh, Siley, okay, nice April Fools. I mean, I thought we got people for a second. Um, Max, what's the real news? Uh, well, you know, I saw a couple people earlier in the chat. Saw Albert. Saw Bandito's Bluebird. Uh, yeah, I got. Uh, I did. I did ink a lifetime contract with uh, my lady, my lady friend uh, Samantha Bear, who uh, is she's a real person. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, she is a real person. She came on the pod. She did come on the pod and uh, she is there. Uh, yeah, very pretty lady with uh, some nice flowers, little engage sign, all of that stuff. But uh, yeah, asked her on Saturday. She said yes. Uh, the Max Simpson stock is up, folks. It's up. The Max Simpson stock is up. We like that. We like that. It's up. Thank you, Do Thank you, Deagle. I appreciate you. A lot of people saying congrats in here. Thank you, guys. I Sidely, I, I don't think it's despite the tattoo. I actually think it's because of the tattoo. I think they'd only added to uh, the allure that is, uh, you know, the Max Simpson uh, brand. You know, that's uh, it's what she tells me, or at least what I tell myself that she tells me. But yeah, uh, 
Despite Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. If that, that woman saw me get, you know, uh, uh, came on the pod, defended my honor, sort of, and then she... You she know, definitely she, didn't. I remember. Uh, <laughs> she, she defended me. She defended me in some way. Uh, what was the like, description of your mouth? <clears throat> uh, she, anyway, uh, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, great lady. Uh, for those of you who have had a uh, pleasure to meet her, uh, very excited. Uh, she's a great, great person. Uh, we need to get her out to some rising matches. That's the one thing that actually I do have a regrettable thing that, uh, you know, we need to get her out. It's a great time. She knows it. And uh, got to drag her out there. I got to have her meet the people. Dare I, dare I even say stay in the, uh, no, I'm not, not in the South End. That's actually too far. That's, I'm not, you animal, you're, not, you're all animals. No, no, no. That's, that's too, that's too far. That's too far. I, I, I can't, I can't sacrifice her to the wolves like that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, I appreciate the well wishes, everyone. It, uh, it does mean a lot. Thank you. Yeah, you can't you can't risk the general robin off now, can you? Oh Max? dear gosh. Oh <laughs> gosh. Nope, nope, don't want that. That's that's how the stock plummets. Uh yeah. <laughs> that's a bit harsh. We love the general. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We love the general. We do love the general. We do love the general. I'm just uh I'm just worried for Sam to make more uh, allies and that's just bad for that's that to, to see Albert, you know, uh you know the aforementioned merger has significantly raised the stock price of Simpson Corp. The merger of Sam and the general, that's bad. That's bad for the stock price of Simpson Corp. That goes down. So uh we'll it's see. kind of like when when I end up in the same place as Sam and it's a bad time for me. It is, you know it's fortunately it's only happened a good handful of times and it's my nightmare but uh you know uh yeah there we go <laughs> uh, uh, all right i think uh i think we've mostly run through what we got there haven't we i think that's about it but uh, anything no, else man. we want to talk it's open cup this week oh yeah Love a bit of open cup i will be betting and i will hopefully be hitting but that's a big hopefully that's a big hopefully but yeah there's some there's some interesting games down there um so you have a look through things, of course. Shout out to El Farolito. They're going to be on the road. They're going to be playing against Central Valley Fuego tomorrow night. Uh, there are two amateur teams playing each other in Texas, which Ooh. means that there will be at least one amateur team from Texas into the third round. At least one amateur team make it through. Um, have a look at some of the... Other games, Vermont Green on Wednesday playing Carolina Core. That'll be an interesting one for Vermont Green, of course, with the big upset win at home mm. in the last round. They will be home again. So uh, we'll have to see how that one goes. And yeah, I mean, plenty of other games as well, of course. Make sure to check out the Up and Cup. Always a good, good, fun you, experience. You, you are Cup friends ever. at DNVR, the Colorado Rapids 2. Do they get a win on Wednesday? And and you know what? Actually, that'll be that'll kick off during. No one time. likes MLS Next Pro. Northern no one likes Colorado MLS Kansas Next Pro MC. in this in this tournament. Yeah, get them out. Yeah, get them out. Okay, get them out. Well, we will see. But we're gonna get out for tonight. Uh, appreciate everyone joining us here on the PH Next Rising Podcast again. Programming reminder: We are back not tomorrow. We're back on Wednesday at six PM. Wednesday. I'll take one question quickly. Um, yes. Sorry, there was one question in there. Digali, does USL join the Cup next round? Yeah, USL Championship will join in the third round, with the exception of the eight best teams from last season. So that's rising. They will join in the fourth round, which is Dang. the round of thirty-two. Okay. Boom. Love yeah. that. But yes, again, uh, for us, we'll be back Wednesday, 6 p.m. But of course, you guys can follow us in the meantime at phnx underscore underscore as because double the underscore. Double the... I, I don't know. It's not been fun watching this team like yes. that, I'm going to be honest. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Double the... Uh, I don't, I don't know. Double the, double the, computer. oh, you haven't even got one right. Here. Double the, double the insert the blank here. Uh, thank you, Pat. Appreciate the, appreciate the kind word. No, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Max David Simpson. You can follow Owen on Twitter at OJ Evans 18. Uh, it's actually just us tonight. So, uh, no, no other, no other follow shout outs, but, uh, we, no, get, we give Reese, Reese, the lackey can get one. I guess we can get, you know, that's, that's fair. Uh, Reese, he, he actually did, he was actually very nice. Uh, Reese 11 underscore, you can give him a shout. Uh, uh, Jacob Franklin's not producing him. You can follow him on uh, Yelp uh, somewhere. Uh, Jacob Franklin uh, probably has a Yelp, I think. Uh, anyway, follow him there. Uh, but it is a beautiful game, but it is way more beautiful when you ain't acting an April Fool. Later, y'all. We all silly like the mayor. 